in Houdini 21. In for Copernicus, there's tons of upgrades. There's the new cable pack note. What it is, it's just a fancy merge. In my opinion, it's a fancy merge, but that's very simplifying it. I mean, that's simplifying it too much. Let me add a bunch of shapes in. Diamond. Okay. Now let's go to do is it cable pack. So I'm gonna take this and I'll line it up in here. There we go. Input from fields. They're all SDFs. Uh, I should have named it better. So this is SDF still doesn't get the name, but that's that's all right. It doesn't affect the functionality. So what this does, it works very well with uh, the curve, the shape scatter or curve node. You can see here that it'll take in stamps. So you can plug in our, oops, you can plug in our cable pack, which has three different objects and just stick it in here. Now this doesn't look like much yet, but let's increase the number. Okay, let's go less stamps then. Uh, let me change this from SDF into a mono first. SDF to mono. So one of the handy things is I only need one SDF to mono node and it'll apply it to every single one. It's a fancy merge with for loop sort of thing going on. It, 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 it'll improve the workflow in Copernicus. Now, this shape scatter accepts a density so you can put in which is a float so i'm just gonna put in a ramp in there or flip it over and i can increase number stamps i mean you can hardly tell the shapes by then you can have a direction we'll need a 2d vector to plug into this red socket it's asking for a uv in the tooltip so let's give it what it wants let me create a uv map plug the uv map in direction Will that work? Okay, it did. It, it Let me block this, disable it. You can see it's rotating. So it is, it's doing something. Shift, okay, yeah, we can shift the UV map. Awesome. I believe we can use this for the scatter on curves. So let me take this. So instead of my arrows, it's time to plug in the curve 3D node, which is one of the new Houdini 21 nodes added to the Copernicus collection. As the name implies, it's combining 3D qualities and slapping it onto the 2D COPS image plane. As you can see here, I'm just drawing in SOPS with the COPS curve 3D node. It's exactly the same as the very familiar Bezier curve we have in SOPS. Now let's see what we have. Let me lower down the scale. There we go, we're starting to see it. Because the curve is actually outside of the bounds of this. So it's not, it's taking this and it's tiling it over here. I didn't draw it within this one to negative one to one space, image space. So if you look here, there's actually in Copernicus, in the composite view, there's the coordinates one to one and negative one to negative one. So this has to match whatever you do in SOPs. What I can do is redraw this curve, put down a grid. I wonder if I can use a ramp. Can I see a ramp? Okay, use this as a reference. So template that. Oh, it won't let me view. Oh yes, it's actually right there. It's very faint. Let me change the color. Okay, yeah, that's better. So you can see that just draw within this, this, this box. So let me do that again. And in fact, I'll draw within the border. There you go. Okay, let's see what we get. And then composite view, there we go, within the border. So this is not very, you, you can delete this right after. It's only there so you can see the border in SOPs. I know it looks like COPs right now because I turned off the lights. I turned off the background and I removed the grid. There you go. In the SOPs view, it's just hard to see what we're doing. And this is a 3D node. This is a curves 3D. So you can actually manipulate this. Uh, let me draw another curve, actually. Now that we have the border, so it's, it's a lot easier. So this, 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 this. Now I'm not gonna use stamps. Uh, curve, scatter, curve, rasterize curves. There you go, rasterize curves. Now you can see right at this point, that's the interlocking section. We can change this, uh, select this hand mode so you can change stuff without adding new points. Select it, select, okay, uh, let me select this one. Press T, sorry, select this point, select T, and I'm gonna push it back. You can see now it's behind this other curve. Now we can actually push it forward. It'll be in front of this curve, put it back. I wanna draw more curves in. Select my uh, pen, otherwise you can't draw. I'm gonna crisscross a few times. Okay, 
Now I'm going to select the selection again. Push this back. Now you can even see it's starting to push it back. There's this whole 3D thing. Now I'm going to push this forward. I'm going to push this back. What I'm trying to show you is how Side Effects is integrating 3D behavior into Copernicus in a very practical way. Next up, layer from Curves node in Copernicus. Uh, we don't need this, sorry. This goes with here. So what layer from Curves does is it gives us more attributes to work with. For example, the width, we can change the width. So this is very similar to what you would have in Illustrator, where you change the width of, of the curve. Now the profile will show how this is cross-sectioned, sort of. The color, let's just do something preset. Here's a preset color. And colors with width, uh, let's just do another preset, magnum. Okay, there you go. This is really fun to play with. And there's even more. SOP invoke. So if you are very obsessed with SOP and you're very tied to that, never fear. It will never leave you. What you can do is feed the curve. Because the curve is the 3D node, you can feed it right into a SOP invoke. Come in here and do whatever you want. This is just a SOP net. The curve 3D, originally being a SOPS node, can be brought into SOPS using the SOP invoke node, which is just a fancy SOP net that will import the curve 3D into and back to Copernicus automatically for you.